All right, gang, so sometimes it's all about looking at shapes, right? Um, if you watched my rocket video, uh, the uh, Hornet fighter, uh, you'll know that I saw, you know, toilet paper tube and egg cups and thought, oh, that looks like a rocket. Well, recently I took a very cheap generic Halloween uh, hockey mask and started to make this as some kind of sci-fi, you know, I was going to paint it silver. And I also... Way back a hundred years ago when I bought dust masks and they came in this package, thought it might make a cool nose piece for something. Um, if you've ever seen Crazy Fishman, a paper mask is his nose, the dust mask. It's his whole mouth piece, actually. Uh, so it gives it that fish snout. So I decided to do a paper mache version of that. And then I'm looking at this and thinking, that's not really going to be good for much. And I'm looking at this and thinking, if I drill holes in here, yeah, that'll have a kind of gas masky look, but it needs some help. And then I thought, oh, but if we put them together, we got something. So I'm going to make this one out of two different pieces, but um, later on I'll do one out of paper mache, and you'll see how much smoother it is. Like as, as one piece where we put the hockey mask and that piece together and then go over it as one piece. I'm, not gonna, I'm probably going to use a skull mask instead because I think that'll look cool too. Um, so that was real quick, just a quick idea on how to make your own gas mask. Either just use the paper mask and glue it on and paint over it, or use the case it came in as a mold, paper mache over it and make yourself one of these. And then glue them together and paint them. And I'll show you what this looks like later on. Stop in on this project. Um, I drilled four little holes there with my cheapy drill master from Harbor Freight. Um, so my actor will be able to breathe. I will do the same thing, but probably do them with more design in mind to this after it's glued on. But I wanted to make sure I had those in there um, so that whoever's wearing it, probably me, will be able to breathe. Uh, I call characters like this Stormtroopers just because if you watch Star Wars, um, you realize that any six actors could be playing those same Stormtroopers getting wiped out by the Rebels left and right. So... Every good science fiction movie takes advantage of the fact that these guys should be wearing masks. You get a couple of stunt actors, a couple of regular actors together, guys that just want to be in it. You give them a part with lines, and the rest of the movie, they play these guys. And uh, everybody's happy. You could even double it for yourself. Uh, very likely when this costume's finished, it will become a green screen sci-fi soldier you can use for guard duty or whatever in your films for free by going to... Um, Indie Streams Facebook page, so facebook.com slash Indie Streams, and I have a bunch of free footage there that you can use for stuff, um, mostly green screen miniatures and characters and CG stuff like this, and occasionally a little bit of uh, my aerial footage that I shoot with my drone, you could also find that over at Pexels. Alright, I'll be back guys. Hey guys, I'm moving the old project. So I'm shooting both of these videos at the same time because I've got all this drying time to worry about. All right, so old school wooden clothespins, C34s, whatever you call them. They are your friend when drying white glue. I had these holding this on. It's actually, crap. It's actually been two days instead of one. So this one kind of wanted to hang on there. Take this off. Take this off. And now you will look. That is not going anywhere. Um, and really, there's not a whole bunch left of this project, but I'll show you here. I punched some holes in the back there with, if you can see them, oh, the light. These little holes here in this part of the mask. And we've got some edges here sticking up on one side. I don't, this side glued down really nicely. I might try to clip that down more with glue, but I'm probably just going to put, yeah, I think it would just be easier to take a strip of paper put that on there with some paper mache magic and go from there um, and then for the eyes if you want to leave it as an open mask you're, you're good to start painting after that I am going to take some uh, when my sunglasses break my cheapy sunglasses break I keep the lenses and they go in all sorts of monsters and masks and they're going in this guy now this thing here where this was sticking up 
and I need to put some extra paper mache on here. You will not need to do that if you make it as one piece. So when I do the skull gas mask, you guys will see that. Uh, we won't need to do that. And apparently I need to do a little bit of trimming here. I'm probably going to use an X-Acto for that. So uh, I'll be back after this piece is dried and this sucker is ready to paint. So you see there where I put the extra paper? It's going to give us a smoother edge to paint over it. Um, once we get some gray prime on there and stuff, it'll, it'll start to straighten out. All right, guys, I uh, apologize for the weird angle here. I can't even really see the screen too well. I'm trying a new Gorillapod mount to see, well, not Gorillapod mount, to see if it'll work. And um, someone's washing their hands upstairs. So we're still in that situation with a bunch of people in the house. So I'm working with limited room still. But we're back to the gas mask. Second. And you see, it's got no eyes. Now, if you're using this as a spooky mask, that's fine. But for a gas mask, you need to have eyes. Oh, um, my favorite thing to use for eyes: busted sunglasses, especially cheap ones. Just take the lenses out. There we go. We're gonna glue them in right on the inside. And for that, we're just gonna use some hot glue. All right. Now, the cool thing about these, if you need to have the character played by same person several times and he doesn't talk. These glasses cover the eyes, you know, the, the tinted lenses cover the eyes really well. You wind up with just a faceless, nameless character with a sinister gas mask on and, uh, you know, don't burn yourself on your hot glue. It'll make you feel stupid. But, you know, there you go. There's one. We just, you got two choices for it. You could either do the outline of the lens, let's put it all around the edge there. Or what I prefer to do is on the inside here. Now, if you, if anyone's going to see the inside of these glasses, you'll need you know these masks. You'll need to finish this edge with some paper mache here and paint the inside. Um, if no one's going to see the inside, it doesn't matter that much. I prefer to do the mask edge because then you know you're getting contact where you need it. And I just do a big blob of it here. These plastic lenses like it plain. So there you go. Take this, stick it in. Make sure you cover the entire hole. It doesn't matter if the lens is a little cuckite in there, just so long as from the other side, all you see is lens. And you'll you'll maybe get some uh, hot glue in there on the lens on the outside. Just go ahead and let it dry. So it doesn't burn you, and then peel it right off. Uh, the other thing you may want to do is after this is dry, go ahead and add some more around these edges in here and get it uh, tighter. But that's the easy part. The tough part is, and again, it depends on what you're going to be using the mask for, adding the strap. Okay, so I've got here an elastic strap we're going to use. Um, it might seem pretty easy it, to me in the beginning. I thought it would be a nice snap, right? A little dab of hot glue, a little dab of hot glue. Put the strap on. You're all good. Um, if you're going to use string, no problem. You can just go ahead, punch holes, tie the string in. Spooky mask, you're good. But again, if the strap is part of the costuming, you need to, to use something that looks a little bit more real. A little bit more. Just trying to use the heat from the gun to close these up. Uh, so if you use the hot glue gun where the threads are from, I cut this one in half. From where you cut it, you can kind of melt some of those threads in. I'm sure the fumes are great for me. Just kind of close that edge a bit so they don't start tearing. Um, but anyway, sorry, got off track. You could also slice some holes in here. Um, put this through. I don't think that looks as good as what I'm about to do because we want to keep all the strap stuff on the inside if we can. So what I do, I cut the strap just a little longer than the inside of the mask. I keep losing track of that camera. Sorry guys, I moved it and it's like an experiment. So I cut it just a little longer um, because, it, you know, again, it's elastic. It will stretch. I'm going to go right across the top of the lenses there, figuring that'll be behind my ears. And we're going to go ahead and do what I said, do a dab of hot glue, and put 
push it in there. Leave some flexible right here, okay? Same on the other side. Dab of hot glue. Leave a flexible edge. Now, I promise you, unless you make this big enough to fit your head exactly, even when this hot glue, especially this cheap stuff that I use, is dry, if you try to pull on this and put the torque on the mask, that the mask will bend a little bit, but if you, if you try to pull this to stretch on your head, it'll just rip the hot glue right off, no matter how much you put over it, under it, around it, whatever. So, knowing that, I have already mixed up some of Jason's Magic Paper Mache, right? Already mixed up the liquid floor for it. We have the strips already torn. We're going to take some of this, and we're going to attach them to our mask right over where we put that glue, that hot glue, and we're going to make sure that there's a nice size of it that touches either side of the mask on the inside. So we're going to overlap that strap. I wish the light was more where the lens is. So we're going to overlap the strap with the paper mache, make sure it lays on there as flat as can, and we're going to do that at least two layers. They don't have to be super thick. We'll go as far in as we can. Right, so I'm using dinner strips here. Then, we're going to take smaller pieces and put them across in this direction on the top and bottom. So we did up and down, now we're going to do long ways. And what's going to happen is this will dry as if you cut holes into the paper mache. And when that's done, you can take this piece, wait for it to dry, fold this over, hot glue it in. So you take the little flap you left and put it in there. And you can decide how many layers you need here. Um, and don't, go, don't do what I did and go too far in. You want to leave enough room for this to, to stretch out. Uh, but this, again, like most paper mache, will stick to itself like a beast. So when this is dry, you should have a nice good anchor for your mask strength. And when this is dry, we'll start painting it. Hi guys. I'm not thrilled with this new camera angle. But anyway, um, that buzzing you hear in the background is my father-in-law outside chipping wood. He snuck up on me while I was doing it. He was helping me and then he kind of took over and you know what? There's a lot of safety features on that thing. It's pretty safe. My wife's out there making sure he's good and uh, he's having a ball and I can get back to this stuff. So, as you can see, got a little bit of stuff in there. As you can see, the band is on and I can pull it and you hear that little, it's fighting against it, but it is staying in there strong now. And that is just that one layer of paper mache that it's actually three or four strips there. And then I took advantage of the fact that I was doing this to kind of come around and do uh, the inside more brown because it'll be easier to paint this. Um, what I'm going to do next is fold that over and super glue it to get it out of the way and give it that little bit of extra hold. Probably not even really a necessary thing. This thing is really like in there. I paint this. Oh. Um, if, if I had room outside, and if I was smart, I would have done it before I put the lenses in. I completely forgot that's why I leave the lenses out until near the end. I did just spray paint a gray primer on it. Um, as you can see, I started with some gray paint around the eyes and stuff. That's because I actually had extra. I'm going to just go ahead and start painting this black. Um, and I'm going to use my trusty brush-on acrylic. Because this is a water-based apple barrel uh you know, for kids kind of paint. And what I like about it is I don't have to worry as much about ventilation and stuff. Because um, sometimes I do stupid stuff and I spray paint inside and I get a headache and my wife gets angry and stuff like that. So I'm going to do the inside, I mean the outside black. I might leave some color around the eyes. I haven't decided yet, but that's probably going to be a good idea. So I might leave the gray because it'll blend out a bit. My wife's texting me.
and I gotta go. Bye-bye. it there for a minute because it was getting super boring. Look, I got black paint all over my hands. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't know if you'll be able to see here, but now I'm getting black paint all over me. There's some brown patches showing up on the mask. And so, what I'm going to do for those is thin the paint a bit more with some of the water I've been using to clean it. And just going ahead over what I've already painted and I just overdid it on this one because I got some other color in there. So don't do that. Uh, <laughs> you want to make sure you get enough black paint on your brush with the water. You can use any thinning agent you want, not necessarily the water, um, you know, alcohol, whatever. Just so that it goes into the little uneven portions of your paper mache. Right, because that's part of the point of the paint is evening out a lot of the uh, lumpiness that paper mache tends to leave. So I've been giving this some thought, and uh, I'm going to definitely leave the gray lines how they are. The um, I have no idea what that angle is. Okay, I do. So the um, brown piece here in the center, the actual mask part that's covering the face. Uh, you know, the breather part. I'm going to go ahead and paint with this orange that I used for the Hornet. Um, not just because I have a lot of orange paint left, but because Jack vs. Lanterns was all pumpkins and there was a lot of orange paint bought for that movie. Um, but also because uh, there's a scene in that movie where people are wearing masks because they're underwater and it was a, when I originally made it, the movie was being shot as a pandemic movie when I originally wrote it. And so there's a joke in there about please wear your masks. Um, I'm going to leave the joke in, and I figured this being a bright orange will take away that military look and give it kind of more of a uniform of a, you know, employee uniform look. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. And then the inside, I don't know, I haven't decided if I'm going to do black or white or orange or at all before that. Um, and then once I've done that orange, if I decide to go back and make it black again, again, black's not a difficult color to cover other colors with. Um, but for now, I'm going to do that emergency orange. That's it. So the paint's still drying. Let's hope it doesn't dry to my face. Um, I probably do need to still put a couple more holes in here. Put these fake purge valves on. These are uh, shampoo bottle caps. And... Um, I'm fogging up the inside of these glasses for a little. Actually, I think that's just dirt that needs to be cleaned up. Um, the band's a little tighter than I anticipated. I probably should have cut it a little longer, but it did stretch. It's still on. Um, and I didn't have as much ability to grab it where I might want to get it on and off my head because this is like where it's dry. Um, i to try and get this off. Yeah, and there you go, guys. I mean, I didn't realize it would look so much like a gorilla. But I kind of like that. Um, so I'm going to use it in this configuration in one of the movies. Let me know if you want to see me make one from scratch instead of watching me put two masks I had already made from paper mache together. And we'll do that. And I'll probably do it with um, <coughs> more of a skull design. I've used this one before on a monster mask. One of the things I like is it's got these deep inset eyes. One of the problems with that is a lot of what looks like deep inset is um, the painted black. So I'm going to go over this, make it a little bit more mine too, and add some clay up here for the times when I use it as an, you know, a positive sculpt. Um, I think I got this for like three bucks. I've got a bunch of different skull masks I can use, and I'll be making a bunch of different. This uh, camera doesn't get very wide, as we've discussed before. Um, the battery ran out, so I guess I'm done. But just let me know what you want to see next down below, and I will do it. 
Uh, and aside from that, it's just filming short films now. So, wish me luck. And I think a tree branch, like, like I think I'm, I got sawdust falling out of my hair because we were chipping the wood out of there before. So, yeah, let me know which, you know, crazy mask you want to see next, what spaceship. I've also got the stuff to make a tall rocket if that's what you want. Um, do you want to see how we put these things in the movie? What, you know, let us know. And it's coming. Both of you people who watch, let me know.